Dave Isaac, of course, at Dave G. Isaac on Twitter from the Courier Post. He joins us with a look at just how important tonight's game is, Dave. And you got a log jam, three teams at 91 points. But Detroit has kind of uh, settled into another race, too. That doesn't mean that this game has diminished in any importance, correct? No, certainly not for the Flyers. They they still have a shot of clinching a playoff spot tomorrow if things go their way. They would have to beat the Red Wings tonight, and then uh, the Red Wings would have to beat uh, Boston tomorrow night, and all of a sudden the Flyers would be in. So basically a win tonight really could propel them to clinch by tomorrow. Is that what you're saying, if some things go their way? Yeah, they would have to win again tomorrow, and uh, Detroit would have to win tomorrow. But, yeah, that would be the case. There is a scenario in which they uh, they end up clinching a spot by tomorrow night. Um, Andrew McDonald ready to play tonight. Uh, and you were, I was going to ask, you know, if he was not able to play, he has been playing really well, uh, how much of a loss that would be. But how much is it help getting him back in the lineup? Because now it looks like they're expected to have him ready to go tonight. Well, I think the fact that he's played with Shane Goss to spare for, you know, the same partner for the last bit here, uh, basically since Michael Delzato went down, is a level of familiarity that will help. Um, you know, he, he does, he's not a guy that's been making huge contributions on the score sheet, but he's done some little things that don't necessarily show up. Um, I know the advanced statistics are not kind to him, but there are things that, that go beyond that. Uh, that he's done that have helped the Flyers. So he's he's been a, a big part of that team. That's certainly what Coach Dave Haxall has said the past several weeks. So uh, it's a good sign if he's ready to go. Uh, Flyers will face Jimmy Howard in goal tonight uh, for Detroit, and he has been playing well as of late, 3-1-0 and uh, for Detroit. And, uh, you know, the Flyers on Sunday, I want to get your thoughts back to that game against Pittsburgh uh, just didn't have it that day, ran out of gas a little. These backs to backs flowing up because they faced a young goalie in that game. They're going to get a veteran goalie uh, tonight. But what you see on Sunday uh, that, that they just didn't have it against the Penguins? It may have been a little bit of fatigue, but to me, they they just can't beat that team. Um, Which is odd because that was the, completely the opposite. Absolutely. And, and Pittsburgh ends up firing their old coach, gets uh, Mike Sullivan in there. And all of a sudden, they are a suffocating defensive team, which is a, a pretty much 180 from what they were uh, in the past several years. And uh, the Flyers just don't seem to have an answer for it. They're a team that that, uh, that team's system is basically tailor-made to play against. I mean, last night was kind of amazing when you look at the Ottawa Senators, who are not going to make the playoffs this year. I think they got out to a three nothing lead against the Penguins last night, and you go, is that the same team that, that played on Sunday? But uh, this Saturday will be interesting because I, I I think it'll probably be more of the same. I don't see a scenario that unless the Flyers found something on tape uh, from their last two games, statistics. It's the same thing in Columbus, but from the last time they won in Columbus to now, I don't think there's anybody on that roster that's that's that was on the the roster the last time they won. So I, I think you look more at the season series. Both of the first two games between the Flyers and the Red Wings this year have been one-goal games, so it's going to be tight. I think there's going to be a little bit of a feeling-out process at the beginning to see if one team is going to, uh, you know, the chess match aspect of it, to see if one team is going to try and surge out of the gates and, and do things that they don't normally do. I think there will be a little bit of wait and see there. Uh, but I, I think the Flyers have proven that they can, if they're methodical in their game, that they can beat Detroit. Uh, you know, the This is like we we just talked about, a real important game for them in terms of taking another step closer to clinching a playoff spot. They need five points in their last four games here uh, to clinch. And if you are discounting Saturday, as I kind of am, with Pittsburgh and saying that's probably a loss, I think this one Hmm. becomes even more important tonight. Uh, We're talking with Dave Isaac here at Flyers and the uh, Detroit Red Wings tonight, 8 o'clock, 97-3. And then the back-to-back tomorrow, they play – Toronto, so they have another back-to-back, then the day off Friday, then another set of back-to-backs to close out the year. But here's a situation the last couple of years. Detroit has kind of been uh, in this playoff race here. The Flyers have really not been. But one thing is interesting with Philadelphia, it seems that all their games recently have had playoff feels. So uh, do you give an edge at all to either one of these teams? Detroit's been in this kind of situation the last couple of years. Philadelphia, not a lot of experience with this group. Well, no, not in the last couple of years, but if you look at the past two months, I think everything's kind of been a playoff game. The, the way that they've gone on a surge here, I mean, they've, they've only lost three games in regulation in the last month, 
Wow. And two of them were to the Pittsburgh Penguins. So they're playing very good against teams that aren't in Pennsylvania. Uh, so I, I think they'll be, they'll be ready for Detroit tonight. Um, it's a team that they've beaten twice. So I think they have a little bit uh, of, of confidence there. Uh, but they also know what to expect at the same time. I don't think they're they're looking at this game tonight taking that team lightly because there's very much on the table for Detroit as well. Hey, Dave, you wrote a piece about Mason over the weekend, and, uh, you know, he has played really well. What are some of the things uh, that he is taking about why he has played so well the last month of the season? I know uh, back in February they had really talked about, well, February is going to be the month. And I don't know that they gained a whole heck of a lot of ground in February, but they kept themselves afloat. But really, his play in March has put them in this position. What's changed for him? Well, what he says is that it's uh, the workload. I mean, he he's obviously everybody that's uh, a goalie in the National Hockey League wants to be the guy, wants to be uh, the, the, the one that carries a heavy workload. He's had to do it out of necessity here. So the Flyers and probably a good portion of the fan base are saying, well, thank goodness he hasn't gotten hurt. Uh, because that's been and, and you know he disagrees with the, the sentiment that that's a, a, a likely thing with him he's pulled himself out of a game this year because he was dehydrated and his leg locked up because of uh, you know cramps but he, he only missed one other game because of injury this year but a lot of people that, that he's still got that preconceived notion working against him that he's uh, a guy that, that can't stay healthy so the fact that he has stayed healthy uh, is certainly a positive when I think the fan base looks at it. When he looks at it, he says, you know what, there's really no plan B. Uh, Anthony Stolarz is probably not going to get a game in when the Flyers are in a playoff race uh, for him to make his NHL debut. If the Flyers were to clinch, that's another story. But he says, you know, I show up to the rink every day and I know that that net is, is mine. So I think that mental side is something that's been a positive for Steve Mason and um, it, it looks like it'll be that way at least until the Flyers clinch a playoff spot or are mathematically eliminated. And uh, that will not be tonight mathematically. Uh, they will not be eliminated tonight, win or lose. So uh, tomorrow against Toronto, expect to see Mason again, you think, no matter what? Yeah, I would I would think so. And Toronto, you know, the last time they came in here, the Flyers absolutely slept walk through that game uh, and ended up losing it with seven seconds left. And I think that left a very poor taste in their mouth. I'd be surprised if they let that happen again all right uh, of course that game tomorrow night here on 97.3 tonight puck drops at eight dave g isaac on twitter courier post online for more on this uh, flyers run as they've got four games left detroit three and boston two so they do have a little room for error but as dave kind of said pittsburgh looming and the islanders clinched last night correct that win clinched for them yeah that, that clinched it for the islanders but uh everything here tonight for the flyers is is just huge. Uh, trying to look here to see what exactly. I mean, it'll their their percentage will go up astronomically if they if they win tonight. I think they're at uh, it's somewhere in the high seventies, I believe. They're at seventy eight point four percent likelihood. If you believe some of these, uh, mm-hmm. you know, websites and looking at sportsclubstats dot com at the moment, that's the one that uh, a lot of people have been quoting. And they they do quite a, a number of. Uh, of writers for for all the the games that remain in the season but if you believe that that the flyers are almost 80 percent in the playoffs it'll be way up after after tonight if they happen to get two points all right uh dave isaac will have uh more uh on this game and the toronto game tomorrow thanks dave appreciate it thanks for having me talk to you soon